All right, let us go to the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to get on with this. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come together in worship and know word and later prayer. We pray, dear God, that you will just bless the time as we continue to do some soul searching as we awaken in order to activate. Lord, just use these times to just speak to our hearts because as we are focusing on the family, we have to be at the place to be um, a good family member. We have to be at the place that we deal with ourselves that this Awaken Activate series is doing for us. So continue to speak to us through your Holy Spirit and through this series. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So last week, uh, we began looking at processing unresolved pain. And we shared five hours. But there was a disadvantage because some um, of you weren't here and there was no recording or um, streaming. And so I'm going to recap the five R's for you. It won't be as substantial as last Wednesday, but last Wednesday was powerful, wasn't it? Strong stuff. So we're going to give you a little of the strong stuff and then we're going to get into more material. Remember, this is not my material. We can activate. But indeed, um, from a spiritual development, church development um, program that I have been involved in and some of us, especially Western Zone pastors. So we were commissioned to share this with you at some point and so the time is right. And so we talk about the five R's, you know, we're, by the way, let me go back. So we're talking about um, awake to my past, awake to my past, it's an awakened active. And what we're talking about, first of all, since we have been, um, since we have started it the past two Wednesdays, Awake to My Past. And we've been talking about especially um, handling our pain. Some of us, in fact, if not all of us, at some point, must have gone through something in the past. You know, something, whether it's traumatic or dramatic, whether it's um, painful or um, struggling, challenge, experience, and so we're, we're, we're working through our painful past. And so this, these five R's will help us to do that. Processing unresolved pain. And, and some of you who are here, yes, this is how I'm going to do it. Because some of you already have it in your head, uh, in your notes. What's the first R? Recognize. You better recognize. All right? So in processing unresolved pain, the first thing you must do is to recognize. And by recognize, you mean to ask God to reveal wounds that still affect you uh, or affect us, you know? We have to recognize and acknowledge what's going on. We can't lie to ourselves. We can't deny um, issues, you know? If they, we are struggling with something and we are still struggling with it, we must first acknowledge it or recognize it because if we don't acknowledge it, we're not honest with ourselves, we will never get past it. You know, that's a reason why some people continue to repeat the past and to relive the past. Because they've not really been honest with themselves and to say, you know what, I, this still bothers me. I still ache over this. So, recognize feelings of hatred, bitterness, resentment, and fear. Recognize, you know, images, words. You know, tr images could represent triggers to, you know. You know, like there are just some things that will just bring up back that, 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 that sad past, painful past. Recognize that this is a trigger, this is an image that does something to you. That brings up hurt. Um, words, memories that have been particularly hurtful. Losses. We talked about grief last time. Um, unforgiveness toward people and toward God. Those who are just simply failing or refusing to forgive others. Are sometimes mad at God, upset with God. And uh, I don't know how some people could do that. But some people really do that. They don't want to forgive God. As if God and them are size. Can you imagine? Ah, oh boy. And then, you know, recognize unconfessed sin altogether. Just recognize. So that's the first thing. You're acknowledging the issues. All right? Then the next R, I'm going to let you guys tell me as I go along now. Remember, the next R is renounce. Very good. May the God don't embarrass me, you see. <laughs> all right. So recognize and then renounce. Renounce, what is this all about? Name the specific things you want God to redeem. All right? Name them. All right? Bad attitude, loss, 
You know, because you recognize it, but now you're going to name them and you're saying, I renounce these in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I have recognized that I have a bad attitude. Now I renounce the bad attitude. Don't, 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 do not be satisfied with recognition of it. You must move on to renouncing it. I'm going to talk about repenting and so forth, but you must, you must move on. Because, you know, you have some people, them cuddle some bad attitudes, um, you know, cut, cuddle some, some behaviors that are unchristlike. So, renounce bad attitude, loss, injury, be betrayal, yes, yeah, some is there. I injustice, curse, curses too, right? You know, some curses can be broken, you know. You have to really pray those generational curses out. Um, unforgiveness again, that one is going to keep coming up, you know, because that's a big one for Christians, you know. It's really big for Christians, you know, and any kind of sin. You know, you're renowned. So you recognize, then you renounce. Then thirdly, what's the third R? Repent. Yes, I gave you a hint, but I know you knew better and you would have gotten there without my hint. Repent. Call upon God as you turn from the ways you've responded to these injustices and injuries that have come into your life. Hurts and so forth. Because sometimes somebody may have hurt you and so... It wasn't that you were the person that was wrong and, you know, it, you're not sinning. But then, depending on how we react to the situation, we might be reacting with bitterness, unforgiveness. Again, I know I'm going to keep saying this, but the truth is, until somebody who needs to hear it um, change, sometimes there are some Christians who have found justification. Somebody has hurt, it, hurt you, somebody has offended you, and you feel that you have reasons and rights to be bitter because of them hurt you, them offend you. You have reasons and right to be ungodly angry. You have reasons and rights to be resentful. You have reasons and rights to be unforgiving. We don't have any biblical Christian spiritual reason. All right? So sometimes the person wronged us and we are in a wrong state of heart. That's what you need to repent of. Lord, I'm sorry for being bitter, you know, even, even though you are the victim. But the victim has become victim of sinful habits too. Amen? Amen? <laughs> oh, you see how the amen is weak and not even come. Oh, you know, I struggle with that one, you're not sure. <laughs> no struggling with that one. That's why I, the Spirit tells me something must say it, you know. Because there are people, some are going to go back on it. I'm going to ride it till the heart stop run. We have gotten to the place, some of us, where we think that we have rights to be bitter and angry because people hurt us. We have no rights and reasons. We have to let it go. Because if we're not careful... We move from a victim to a prisoner of bitterness, prisoner of anger, prisoner of unforgiveness, and you name it. Amen? So we're going to let these things go. If we don't handle our past well, we can't handle our present and our future well. Amen? That's why we're awakening to our past. All right? So you recognize, you renounce, you repent. What's the fourth R, please? You reframe. All right, you reframe. All right, you replace the lies with God's truth. All right, you replace the lies with God's truth. And we declared a verse over you. We won't go back over that, but I'll give you the reference again. Ephesians 3, verse 16 to 20, that states that we, our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above that we can ever ask or think. And so, don't think that um, you can never get past this or you can never get over this. No. Did you reframe, replace the lies with God's truth. Declare forgiveness over yourself um, using scripture. Freedom, healing, acceptance, value, peace and grace. You reframe your, 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 your mind to say that, listen, this will no longer have a stronghold on me. My past will no longer have a stronghold on me. Amen? And then finally... The last thing we looked at, the last R is realign. Realign. Oh, yes, we have visuals too. Yes, I didn't even look up to see that. So you're great too. That's why. 
<laughs> All right. I know you guys had notes and you would have said it without the um the PowerPoint either way. So you realign. And when we say realign, what we're talking about, shift your way of living to align with this biblical reality. Shift your way of also thinking uh, to align with the biblical reality. Shift your way of speaking. Uh, Shift your way of reacting. Shift your way of acting. Just shift your way that was on, was not the way of Christ, was not the way of Bible, to the way Jesus would do this, to the way Bible would, would say that you, you, you react. Amen? And you're going to yield yourself. We're going to yield ourselves to God's Spirit as we choose to live. We're going to release grudges. You know, I know that um, what we're doing almost ties in on Sunday too because... Some of you, if not all of you, were, um, were there on Sunday when we looked at, um, you know, Absalom. And I couldn't help but think of him when I was about to make this statement. Releasing your grudges. Man, Absalom had a, an over 45 year grudge there, you know, for him daddy, you know. Because remember, we, we, we did the match. He was away for three years. He, and then two years he stayed in Jerusalem, never saw his father. And then the Bible said, 40 years after. And I said to myself, maybe, I, maybe I'm a different person from some, but I cannot, I cannot imagine myself having a grudge for somebody for even a month. Much less five years, 40 years. Me can't imagine me, myself doing that. But some Christians do it, you know. You'll be surprised. Some Christians still are doing it too. And someone said, Pastor, I'm not imagining my reality. Me do it all the time. You know, hard. <laughs> I, I wear it as a badge of honor too, you know. Release your grudges, brothers and sisters. Amen? Let them go. Making restitution wherever possible. That's what we're talking about realigning. Ceasing to blame. Ceasing to slander. Ceasing to criticize. Cease, you know, you know, stop cutting down people. Um, stop harming people. Uh, stop harming your offender. You know, don't, we do not, we should not have a vendetta on our offenders. Revenge, um, God will repay. Let him avenge you. All right? We're not teaching anybody here to be um, a pushover or a doormat where people just step on you. Don't get me wrong. You, you have to know when to say no to some things, some people, and be firm and all of that. But what we're saying is that we're not even talking about the idea of somebody stepping on you. We're talking about the vendetta that some Christians have signed up to say, watch me and her. Watch me and him. I'm going making life hard, you see. That's not biblical, you know. Cease to harm your offender. That's not your place. That's not your position. God does it better. Let him take, let him take the battle to them. Fight on your behalf. And then censoring your negative self-talk. You know, what are you telling yourself? What are you, um, you know, teaching yourself? What are you saying to yourself? Censor it. You know, negative talk must stop. Ne negative thinking must stop. Because usually negative talk... Um, spews out of negative thinking. So those are the five R's in processing unresolved pain. Before we move on to more, we want you to all uh, repeat them. All right? Let's go. The five R's for processing pain. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. All right. Some, 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 some strongholds can be broken by that, you know. <laughs> Amen. All right. So we're moving on. We're still under this idea of awakening to my past, awaken to my past. And uh, there are three lenses that we should see or evaluate our pain through, all right, our pain in our past. When you go through pain, when we have gone through pain in the past, we should look at them in three ways. In other words, these three lenses are going to be teaching us how to view our past and how to um, handle it, all right, in, in, in such respect. So the first one 
is spiritual formation and character development. When we have had issues in the past, pain in the past, there's a spiritual formation and character development that is happening, even in the bad situation. God is seeking to develop our character and anchor us spiritually through all of life's painful experience. Let me see if there's anybody who believes that. Is that true? Yeah. God is seeking to develop our character and anchor us spiritually through all of life's painful experiences. So we must see our painful past through this lens of spiritual formation and character development. Even though it's painful, even though it is challenging and it's hurtful, it is forming us. Are we allowing it to form us? <laughs> wow, the Holy Spirit can drop some word in my mouth sometimes. You see, man, give me surprise. Trust me. Me more surprised than when go, when, what, what you hear. Are we allowing the thing to spiritually form us or deform us? Wow. Are we allowing the painful past to form us or deform us? Wow. Now for some people, it's not spiritually forming anything, you know. Some of we behave more spiritually deformed than anything else. Am I talking to the things them? We're not growing. It's like we're stunted and stuck in the past. It's not spiritual formation nor spiritual reformation, but spiritual deformation that is going on for some people. All right, somebody, you have a mic already, Pat? Go ahead. All right. Um, in addition to what you're saying, I think I do agree. Indeed, whatever we go through, God is really making us into who he wants us to be. But I think what happens is that we don't understand that. Because it's like we fight it. Um, when we go through rough times or things that are not so good, we fight. And we say, no, we don't want this to happen or whatever. Instead of resting and just letting God work. And just saying, God, whatever you want, just do. We fight it. and We try to come against it. But and not letting God use that bad or good situation to mold us to become more like him. Well said, well said. And Sister Terran is coming for the mic, and I think Mr. Clark has something to say after. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, well said. However, we have to understand that I, I think she's taking it from just a Christian point of view. But we have to realize that some of us were going through before we came to Christ, right? And um, when you're going through pain, there's no thought of, oh, this is, God is using this for his glory. No, there's no thought of that. In the moment outside of Christ, pain is just pain. You want to get out, you want to hurt somebody, or whoever come at you, you want to go back up at them. All right? Now, when you come to Christ, it is he by his spirit who says to you, Terian, that time I was using it for this thing. That time, I was using it for this thing. Then you learn to appreciate. You learn to look back and say, Wow, God, you did all that so I could be this, right? But when we're going through pain, even as Christians, sometimes we don't stop to ask God, God, is this you putting me through this? And um, I remember this Monday, I think month, sometimes we do fun Bible study online. Um, I was saying to them, I don't think David had the thought that well, God is using this for his glory. No, David was just going through because David didn't, he wasn't born and somebody said, oh, you're a man of the God who owns heart, right? God knew that, but David never knew that. He had to go through the logo logo to realize and then God said, okay, this is who you are, all right? And I said to the person that my childhood was never easy, but now I can stop. And I can hear God say, remember when that happened and you wanted to die? That was all me. And I kept you for this. So I said to them, look, I had to learn that so I could make it through this. Because if I hadn't, if I cut the short road, then right now I would bow out when challenges come. Had I not go through all that struggle, I would not learn what hardship and pain and standing strong would be like. So. Thank you for sharing, sister. Yes. Yeah, yes, Pastor. I'm, I'm thinking that um, here you are going 
Some people go through the struggle and the difficulties because of wrong decision, because of sin, disobedience, and so And the, the Bible speaks of the devil go about seeking whom he may devour. And as a ruling line, and we, we find that some of the trials that we might be going through, in essence, is not so much that God is taking us through the trial, but God will deliver us from the trial because of our disobedience or our sinful act, because it brought certain consequences that the devil has played a trick. So it's not so many times to say that everything that we are going through is of the, you would say, is of the hand of God. You understand? And when I look at it, that we have a responsibility that we need to be obedient to him and because of disobedience and their sinful ways of thought and so forth, there are consequences. And the devil used that and yet God has so, you know, delivers. Which Wonderful. after that trials and that we come true, we will look on it and it will make us stronger. You understand? And more to go forward for him. All right. Wonderful balance here. Some are caused by us. Some are caused by others. And whatever it is, God wants us to be able to see it through the lens of spiritual formation and character development. In order to grow our dependence on God, by the way. And our experiences of God's trustworthiness will be, you know, strengthened. You know, and reliance on God's word. That will help to strengthen our character. So, the first lens that we can see our past, pain in the past, is through the spiritual formation and character development um, lens. Secondly, another lens is guidance and direction. Uh, let me flesh that out for you. What kind of guidance? Direct? God frequently uses painful experiences to close doors and to open doors. Amen? God frequently uses painful experiences to close doors and open doors. And in this way, provides direction and guidance for our lives. So, you might have gone through something that was really, really um, bad and struggling. But one of the lens, apart from spiritual formation and it building your character, is that it's, God can use it to guide and direct you. You know, uh, let me just put this because there are some people who have had some. Let's, the word that comes to mind when I think of this particular lens is disappointment. Yeah, just disappointment. You are doing and we're doing all that you're supposed to do, and then you just don't get that, get to the place you want to, and you're disappointed with God and so forth. But God, you are seeing disappointment, but God is giving you direction. You want this thing, you want this thing, you want this thing so badly. And God doesn't give it to you and you're disappointed so till you're depressed. <laughs> and God is saying, actually, you don't know the bullet will me just make your dodge. The bomb that may just make your dodge. The missile, a nuclear missile, you dodge, you know. So, when we view our past experiences through these lenses, we will come out better. Remember, you know, they have happened in the past. Whether you, as Sister Terry said, whether you're saved or not, they have happened in the past. We're still talking about the past, you know. So, why are, I, why are we talking about the past still? Because some people are still stuck in the past. Because some people are still overcome by the past. Some people don't know how to overcome it. So we're taught. So all of these things, if no, if there's somebody who doesn't get what this is all about, is that we have to get to the place if we're going to overcome our past. We have to do the five R's and then we have to now focus through the spiritual lenses of Jesus Christ. Am I making sense here? Because you, 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 you have to get to the place where you, you get past your past, you know. In order to, to see who you are. Because me not like you, you know. There are some people who don't know who they are yet, you know. Because when we're going to get to the present, awaken to the present, you're going to find out that some people don't know who they are, where they are, and what they're supposed to do. They're clueless. And it's not a judgmental statement I'm making. That is something that is, is, is pretty normal for some people. In other words, you're not, if you are feeling like, oh, I don't know. Me don't know nothing. But listen, <laughs> there are quite a bit of people who are in their 30s. 
who are in their 40s who are still trying to find their purpose. But sometimes it is because they are not over the past. Am I making sense? So guidance and direction. And then thirdly, the third lens is deepening and clarifying the values. All right? This is, as we experience pain, learn from it. As we experience pain, learn from it. And respond in God-honoring ways. Our commitment to certain values is deepened and what we value becomes more clear. All right? For example, and this is the author who shared this with us when, when I was actually doing this workshop. He shared this with us that he had a friend who grew up in a very broken home. All right? And his dad died when he was young. No, his friend is an adult, married, and has family. And they carry the priority or the value of family in powerful, unique, and positive ways. In other words, why am I saying that? And what is the relevance of that story? This is a true story. Listen again. He grew up in a very broken home. His father died when he was very young. Now he's an adult, married, and what they decided to do was not live in a broken present and live in a broken future because for some people you know they grew up in a broken home they carry the brokenness into adulthood they carry the brokenness into marriage am i talking to things them and the home is broken because this person never was never mended amen never mended they were never ready for marriage they were never ready to have children am i talking to things them and uh, they have allowed the narrative to say well it's because you go, went through this so that's why you're like this because certain sets of for want of a better word because some people find it um helpful certain sets of psychology almost makes people feel as if whew, <laughs> yeah thank you are justified certain side of psychology almost makes you feel like if you and i said it uh, two son two winters ago if you were molested then uh, we understand why you end up molesting somebody when you grow up may not understand it not, it's not acceptable either it's not acceptable as i said if you were hurt and then you and you were hurt in one way and you end up doing it to somebody else the same way when you get older you're worse may not, it begs with me if you want begs with me you're worse you're worse because you felt all of this pain. Somebody abused you and you turn around but abuse somebody else. What you should be doing is to as best as you can, one, never make it happen to anybody again. Never do it to anybody again. You should be an advocate to make sure that nobody in your household is abused. Because you felt the pain. Why are you putting on pain on somebody else that you, you were... You understand what I'm talking about? And so, this, this family broken home lost their dad lost his dad and so forth they decided that listen we are going to make sure that in our family we are going to make sure that we are not going to treat our children a certain way as um he said he's not going to treat his wife a certain way you have to make some some changes don't let your past rule you it deepens and clarifies your values and so if your values are different, if your values are not aligned with God's values, then you're going to live out your past. If you have some values that are, you know, I'll, I'll wait because I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. So let me stop there because I'm going to sound like I'm repeating myself. So I'll stop there for a moment. Next slide. Here's what I want us to take a moment to do. And this includes those of you who are online. As this, this slide suggests, identify additional insights or lessons that you have learned from your past and, and, and this is going to be very bold a very bold move by anybody who chooses to do this so i'm gonna if you would like to share you don't have to get into details i don't want the details of the incident or the experience here's what i'd want you to be if somebody wants to open up so think about what i'm asking now is there a situation an experience you had in your past that you learned a lesson from 
Or having now done this series, at this juncture you're realizing that, oh, this is an additional insight that I'm now learning about this experience. All right, let me, let me, let me keep talking so you can um, formulate your words if you want to share. There are many insights that God has taught you over your lifetime. When do you suppose we are most teachable? In times of success or in times of difficulty? Most times for many of us, it is in the times of difficulty. That's when we are most teachable. So what I'm asking is, is there anyone who would want to share that? You know, I experienced something. You don't have to talk about it something, but I experienced something in my past. And I have learned that, um, you know, I needed to forgive or something. Anybody? Remember, my son, you have to tell me what it is, you know. <laughs> but what you have learned, are you still thinking? All right, let, let me share one. Let me share one. For, let me share one. And I'll be personal. So, we grew up, and I would have kind of hinted at this a long time. We, meaning my brother, my sister, and myself, we grew up under a heavy hand from our father. And we really, we really didn't, our father and us didn't gel. We didn't gel because he was very strict. He didn't show affections to us and then he just left us, you know, gone over foreign. And then slowly, the, what you call it now, the communication just stopped. Until up to this day, he doesn't communicate to us anymore. And the last time I heard from my father was my mother died. I give him credit for that. He you know, reached out to us and said, you know, sorry your mother died, send some money for the funeral. And then in disconnect again, I want to hear from him again. <laughs> the number he even, even gave to us is not even working. And, you know, our father did a number on us. But I remember before my brother and my sister and myself got married. As young adults, Christian adults, we talked about it. And we talked about the, the kind of pain that he caused and so forth even to my mother and uh, we really were angry and then we we're all in our 20s and mature christian by that time and, we, and then we said to ourselves you know what we don't do well to be angry about this anymore you know? let us make a pact with three of us as adult children we're going to make a pact that we're not going to continue to discuss this in a way that will be bitter and anything we're going to let it go but here's a lesson we also learned we said to ourselves that if we were to get married and have children, we're not going to want to treat our spouse the way he treated my mother. And two, if we have children, we're not going to treat our children the way he treated us. We decided, and the word we use, the phrase we're going to break that cycle. Am I making sense? We decided that where our children shouldn't, we were afraid of, terrified of our daddy. Terrified. We never, you know, we don't, couldn't even call him daddy. A father we call him. Yes, Father. So we said that when we have, if we have children, we want our children to be able to come to us, to talk with us, to communicate with us. We're going to break that cycle. No, we're the only one that have no children or a child. So I'm living vicariously to my brother and my sister. <laughs> and I watched them fulfill that pact. Because I know my nephew and my niece. And I watch them. They are very loving and close with their, you know, their, their, their child. And their, their children are adults now. And we broke the cycle. And, and again, when we talk about even the spouse, we said, we're, we're, we're going to make sure that our spouses feel loved. And they're, you know, you know, so there was a lot that we could have said. Since my daddy treat me so, we're going to treat with children so. Since my daddy treat my mother so, me I go treat my wife so. No, we said the opposite must happen. Do the same. Do the same. Break the cycle. If you had a bad past, break the cycle. Learn from it. Don't become... <laughs> oh Lord, thank you Holy Spirit. It's interesting that we never liked what was done to us and then we become a repeat offender. 
repeat what the offender did to us. That's what I mean by repeat offender. Repeat what the offender did to us. We grow up and pass it and stop it. Break it in Jesus' name. Amen? <laughs> Let's break it. All right? So, that's my sharing. I don't think anybody else wants to share after that. Okay, thank you, Sister Pat. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, my situation is this. I think that I grew up in a family where um, there was a lot of fear. I think coming from my mom and stuff, we were fearful. I remember when I was, in, when I was going to school, I was so afraid. I used to go to Alban and they usually have what they call gully boy. And I used to be so scared. I mean, I remember one day where there was a fight that broke out and I used to run. I was so terrifying, scared. And um, at work, they, 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 they say I must go to the schools that were in the far reaches of the, you know, in the hill, hills, in the precipice kind of terrain. And I was scared. I mean, I was terrified driving those terrains. Narrow roads, precipice, bad road. It was awful. And I would be so scared. I remember I was driving and I was saying no. And I, I would repeat the verse, the verse in the Bible. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. And I was there praying and I was repeating and I repeating and I repeating. I renounced it. I reduced faith in the name of Jesus. I was there praying and carrying on and I, and keep, I keep doing it and over and over until I was driving and, and I'm okay now. I mean, it's not a hundred percent gone. But it's a whole lot less. My friends, this is how, if you are still struggling with your past, the painful past, this is how you should be able to view them through these lenses. You know, the deepening and the clarifying, let me repeat that for you. Um, the guidance and the direction, what is he guiding you to or through because of this, and what kind of spiritual formation is, is happening to your character. All right? And, and, and I'll end tonight by saying this. There can be a high price for forgetfulness. Remember that the Israelites wandered for decades in the wilderness, primarily because of their unwillingness to remember what God had taught them. In other words, what lessons are you learning through your difficulties? Have you learned through your difficulties? Remember the most teachable moment most of us have. It's only difficult. When we're successful, some of us even say we're not even to learn. But in the difficult moment, what are you learning? What has God taught you? So if you didn't get lessons from your past yet, my lead, my takeaway, your homework, if there's, a, if there's an incident or an experience that is still bothering you, you're going to go home and think through that past. And you're going to find ways, godly ways of of. Of, of what are the lessons, Father? What, are you, what have you taught me? I have not learned anything from it because I've allowed the thing to consume me for so long. Change your lenses. Amen? What lessons have you learned from your past? That's the takeaway for tonight. We stop there because we're, we're ready to go to the next one next week, Wednesday. Awake to my present. So you need to do the homework. So that when we look at next week, Wednesday, awake to my present, we would have both awakened to the past and put the bad past to sleep. <laughs> All right? You get that oxymoron right there? All right? So indeed, let's end this segment with prayer. And then we're going to take a prayer request and pray about other things. So let's pray for ourselves right now. Father, we come before you. We want to thank you, first of all, for being the God of our past, present, and future. For being the God who knows us even better than ourselves. For being the God who has always been there. For being the God who can help us overcome our bad past. So God, I pray that all of us are doing some kind of evaluation now. Some will need stronger help. Holy Spirit, help them. For it is not our intention to dig up terrible pasts and terrible experiences that will hurt people. It is our intention to be able to acknowledge it, to get past the hurt. And so God, if that is 
tough for some people. Speak to them, help them through this. Tell them to understand this process. The process is not to break them. The process is to actually mend them. The process is not to break them, but to heal them. And so God, help us all here to leave healed. There, I feel like there's somebody here in church as well as online, and more than one too, who needed to hear this. And they have been a prisoner of their, their bad experiences or, or, or bad experience. It could be a, a, a family secret. It could be even just a secret between them and somebody else that something bad really happened. And they, they cry over it at times. They haven't shared it with anybody. Lord, let them realize you know. Let them realize you don't condone the hurt and the offense that was meted out to them. Because sometimes they are questioning you. Where were you? Why didn't you fight for me? Why didn't you help me? They are, they are angry at you. And they don't even realize. God help them. Love them. Show them. Love them back to healthiness. In the name of Jesus Christ. That when we come back next Wednesday, we will be ready for the present. To find who we are. Some persons have been crippled by their past. And so they are afraid or they are unaware of what they could become they are just stunted by it so lord i pray that we'll walk through the door of the present for we cannot live in the past help us dear god to live in the present and indeed walk in it In jesus name we pray amen